The only thing I learned from Woodstock is to make sure that you had five contingency plans for every adventure you ever did. They call me Chip. The last name is Monk. Chip Monk has become a corporate name. Uh, that was a defensive move at the age of 10 in prep school, in school, in preschool. And um, the guys, my, one of my names is Beresford. So they changed that to breastfed, so I immediately had to pick up Chip and become Chipmunk because that was inappropriate for young people to be calling me breasted. Um, my particular job is easily said as a support mechanism. And it's, it's, it's vast in its, in its little pockets of interest. It's everything from lighting, presentation, models, drawings, presentations, trying to get the job, get the job done, then get <laughs> paid for the job. It's the same old roof, you know? It's, it's always the same. But the parties change, and that's the interesting part about it. It's kind of like a shuffleboard game. Technology holds things in the air, it allows me to fly pipes of lights or things like that, and safety standards and all that is imperative. Now, where it all came from is, my mother was particularly inventive, and she was suffering from something you might call a, a less than magnificent marriage. So she wrote a letter to the health, to the, the health board of Wellesley, Massachusetts, at the, the school board, and explained that I had to be in uh, New York every month um, for basic life sustain through a specialized doctor, et cetera, and his papers were also included in her note. And the school board said, by all means, let's keep the fellow alive, at least. So. Um, Started Wellesley to Boston to New York on the train. That's five o'clock in the morning. Uh, throw your bags in the Biltmore, grab a sandwich if you're lucky, and go to the first afternoon matinee on Wednesday. Then go to the automat and put your coins in it, open the little door and get your slice of pie or whatever, and um, rush to the evening performance. Then get two hours sleep and um, New York, Boston, Wellesley, and make the Thursday classes. So that was about two years of that, and I saw every musical, which was the, my, my mother's fascination and escape. I saw every musical that was going at that time, and um, the sunsets and the costumes and the sunrises and the clouds and the projections, that were marvelous, absolutely great stuff, you know. And I was never pressured or suggested at any time, this might be an interesting field for you. And along the way, uh, she was very chatty and had uh, lots of contacts. And I met uh, Jeannie Rosenthal and then later had the pleasure of chatting with her and, at, in, in her work with Craig, at Cambridge in Massachusetts. And um, Abe Fader, Fader suggested that I look up Charlie Altman and Yonkers. So on one of those Wednesdays, I was given a couple of hundred bucks and mom said, all right, now you're on your own for a moment. And I think I was 15, 16 in those two years. Um, why don't you take a trip up to Yonkers? They have addresses in the phone book still. <laughs> we're, not, we're not so protected yet. And knock on those three doors and find out who Charlie is. And I did, and I said, Mr. Altman, I know a little bit about lighting, and, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I'd like to work on the benches and uh, hone my skill from the bottom up, knowing exactly how the instrument works, thank you. He said, great, we'll gel those, that's a 902, put the, follow, put the colors in as, the, as that boom is and make sure the clips are bent over correctly so they don't snag on each other and just, just do it right. And he walked out of the garage and so I finished gelling the 12 or 14 booms and said, when can I come back? He said, anytime you have the time. And that sort of an association began, allowed me to then get very soon to the fact when working at the gate, simply, um, all the rental gear that came back that was mildly damaged or something that wasn't uh, in, in the condition that you, would, that you could successfully rent again. He said, well, that's pretty easy. There are the parts. They're all around you. All you have to do is buy a new lamp. If the lamp's working and it's, it's come back in that, cradle it, take care of it, take it along with you. So he basically gifted the entire gate five-year creation of bringing it up to a 450-seater magnificent club. Absolutely lovely. And so that's how it happened.
And then it went on and on and on, and very shortly after the beginning of The Gate, then I was put into Newport Folk and Jazz by Albert Grossman because he wanted Joni Baez in his stable. He was the management of everybody from Peter, Paul, and Mary to Dylan to Robbie Robertson, the band, and, and, you know. And um, it just started to snowball and never stopped. The only thing I learned from Woodstock is to make sure that you had five contingency plans for every adventure you ever did. And since Stones, uh, CSN European and, and then uh, the Stones for five years and started right after that with Stones 69 US, um, yeah, I needed all the help I could do. <laughs> I needed every trick I could find. I had 650,000 watts of light sitting under the stage rusting. I had, I had 12 follow spots for the, for the entire film. And they're carbon arcs and they only burn for 41 minutes. So that means that everybody had to start out with different lengths of carbon, and that was on my cue. And um, I'd, I'd have to pull the short guy out first and make sure he trimmed into the correct length of carbon. And then I'd reel down the line, and, I'd, and then they would be, the, 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 the critical person was always the guy that started, started short. You know, because then he became long. <laughs> then, I had to, then I had to change to the other end of the scale to remember the, the next trim. See what I mean? It's just part of not having a light bulb in a lamp. You just bring your own fire. <laughs> that, was the, that was the light source. Yeah, we did the, a music festival of three days, uh, two, two aircraft. And to get away, um, uh, my assistant of mine and uh, Andrea, uh, a friend that I brought with me, um, paddled across the Zaire River from Leopoldville to Brazzaville to get the heck, heck out of the way. <laughs> and we were followed by things that had big tails. <laughs> and the follow spots and the camera, major cameras, were all to be done on a Richier tower crane, two Richiers. Well, Mobutu, the president, decided that they would be better used in the, in the building industry in Zaire, so he said, no, you can't use those, I'll keep them, thank you very much. And then he tried to keep most of the rest of the equipment. McManus got most of his lighting equipment out. I was line producer and basically spent my time in the bush looking at, uh, at individual bands that were going to be perform on the three-day festival, local bands, and, um, and charting each one of them, all the measurements exactly of how they set up and, and their relationship to their equipment and things like that. So it could be duplicated exactly without their concern on stage. Yeah. So I, I, I shifted gears. I shifted gears only by title in my head. Oh, I'm a line producer. I wonder what that is. <laughs> the kids used to take tissues or, or, or a paper and they'd dab you like this as though they, they were sponging you, which they in fact were. They, they just wanted money. And um, there was a large amount of them at one time and I reacted to them and said hi and gave, emptied my pockets of silver and they dragged me off in the bush en masse. <laughs> I had to have my, some of my extras come and save me. <laughs> it was a very spirited, I mean, it wasn't the Zaire that Miriam and I worked, or, 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 we were never in the Republic of Congo, but it wasn't, it wasn't the Africa, it wasn't the, the Europe, it wasn't the, the Israel, anything that we had worked in before. It, Africa is so changed now, it's so Chinese. You might as well learn Mandarin other than any, than Tlaasa or Swahili or anything else. Sooner or later, you know, it's, um, it's now very much like with CNN's um, Africa Speaks and things like that, it's very much more like, um, uh, it's like the village in the 60s when everybody is starting to do business and, and uh, wear interesting clothing and try and sell it. And That's what they're doing now. That's how they're growing up. And they think, they think they're unusual. We did it in the 60s. Somebody else did it in the 70s. Right? And now it's your turn. The most exciting, the most, um, the most scheduled, um, the most OCD that you could possibly be was five years with Bette Midler. She was always ahead of me and, you know, shouting cues or shouting corrections or, why don't we try this? Very lively, brilliant voice, uh, just was such a craftswoman. Was, it just raised the level of everything that we were doing. It had to be tighter, it had to be better, you know. And she paid for it, courteously. Yeah, it was neat. 
You get what you pay for. I never use an intelligent light source. I have no, no use for them whatsoever. My delight are, are the pencils or the paint brushes and the things that I can do with, an, with, a, with a follow spot. You know, generally for musicians, it's bottom of guitar, top of head. You know, keep that continuous until such time as it's solo. Then you may, may iris up a little bit if you need to, change the attitude, or let's, let me have him picked up from here, and you'll slowly leave, and therefore we're gonna have a blank side, and that'll be interesting because we'll just start to take a peek at that like blank side, but when he gets back into the tonic or back into the straight fours again, then, then let's swing around and you pick up again. It's, it's just wonderful things that you can do with it. And they're not really available to me, especially the color choices in, uh, in automated lighting. I have no interest in it whatsoever. The ability to change color and not use five times the instruments that you want to, to get five different colors of backlight or side light or shin busters or whatever, you know. Of course, it's, it's less expensive. Well, it isn't really less expensive. It's less laborious because there's only, there, you can have five, five lights instead of 25 to get you five colors. Those five are supposedly to give you all the five colors you want. You know, all I need is a lot of, a lot of beef and a 2K Fresnel with a BVW in it is, 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 makes me very happy. You know, if I need more, I'll go to Julien Loet, <laughs> you know, uh, and get the finest instruments that I can find. I, as long as I have a, a, a constant light source and can deal with it with shutters and, and iris and dowser and all of that, I mean, I'm very happy. The performer and designer have to mesh. And if it's not like this, if it turns out like this, then you're in trouble. But the designer has simply uh, three things, color, angle, intensity, and then you bring the blessing, which no one can take away from you, which is the timing. And if you crack on and you get it on the and before the one, because the vocal coming in on the one has to be lit by the lamp that is now bright enough, being a half a beat before and in, in four bars, yeah, you, you, have to, you, you have to know it, you know. But we have our own ladder of, uh, of importance. And it, uh, it, it has more to do with creativity than it does with... Um, the relationship with the performer is a difficult one because if, if you were like his ladyship, uh, Mr. Jagger, you have no idea who it is that's speaking to you. So in the, the beginning of a, of a chat or a meeting or whatever, you have to try and figure out who of the seven personalities happens to be speaking today if you want to be successful. And then you have ego problems of the stature of which uh, one considers themselves. So as the importance is you have to remember you're a support mechanism. You have three fingers on the elbow as, you cross the, as he crosses the street. He or she. It's pretty simple. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's just the same old stuff. It's, it's only the tools that you're given. And most people, because of the, the, the joy of being able to change all these color washes at will, you know, have forgotten the fact that the follow spot to, for me is the directorial pencil tells the audience what is prominent. The wash doesn't work, you know. There are levels in the band, in, 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 in all these stratas, as these levels of importance. And visually, you can direct that importance exactly where you want it. So the more you know about that person, and the more you know about the music, the more articulate you can be in saying, watch this. <laughs>
It was probably another one of those interesting things that happened like things at Woodstock where, you know, the rain came and everybody looked like a drowned rat. There was no more delineation or there was no difference. We, nobody was suiting anybody anymore, you know. It's, there's all sorts of things that happen, uh, unbeknownst to you or right in front of your eyes that, that, uh, that make your life real easy. <laughs> Just, you know, be prepared. Thank you.